Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course where you will learn how to generate wind loads for roof systems for an enclosed building structure. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on wind acting parallel to the positive global z-axis direction. Considering that our sample structure is a gable roof system and considering the wind direction we're taking a look at, this means we're looking particularly at the tables for wind acting parallel to the ridge. Before we create the wind load definitions for the roof areas of our enclosed building structure, let's first take a look at how RAM elements will calculate the design wind pressures. RAM elements uses the ASE 716 chapter 26 and 27 to calculate the design wind pressure for building structures. Since all wind calculations closely follow the code requirements, it is recommended that you're familiar with the ASE 7 and have access to the code while creating wind definitions to ensure that all parameters are set appropriately and to ensure that all pressure types and wind directions are accounted for. When you are specifying your parameters for your roof system, there's a few additional pieces of information you will have to provide the program so it can correctly determine what the roof pressure coefficient will be. This will include the wind direction, whether you are normal or parallel to the ridge of your structure, and whether or not you're working on case A or case B. Now, as far as the angle and the distance from the windward edge, the program will be able to determine this information considering the areas that this wind definition is assigned to. We will now turn our attention back to our RAM Elements main application, and we're ready to start generating our wind loads for our roof system when wind is acting parallel to the ridge or basically in the global z-axis direction. To start that process, let's select the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and then click on the Wind Definition icon. Now, if we were to take a look at the code requirements for wind acting on a gable roof system, according to the main wind force resisting system, when the wind is acting parallel to the ridge, we're going to see that we're going to need to generate several different wind definitions to account for the horizontal distance from the windward edge. Considering that information from the code, this means I'm going to generate three separate wind load definition for this particular wind load case. I'm going to take a look at the horizontal distance from the windward edge of 0 to H, which is your main roof height. And I'm going to take a look at the horizontal distance from the windward edge of H to 2H. And then finally, anything that's further away than 2H, or again, your mean roof height. So let's go ahead and get started with our first wind definition. Now, almost all of the parameters are the same as they would be for the windward wall. This would include your general parameters, building geometry, and topographic factor. Now, keeping all of that information, I'm going to focus on this area's information. I'm going to select the roof area. Now, for this particular case, I'm going to take a look at case A. And I need to enter my wind direction. Anytime I'm looking at wind parallel to the ridge, I'm going to enter a wind direction of 90 degrees. In addition to that, I'm going to enter the area information and then the distance from the windward edge. I'm going to enter 22 feet. Now, how does the program know what the mean roof height is? Well, I did provide that information already up here. So it's able to consider all of that information within this wind definition. Next, I'm going to enter my internal point coordinates and then enter my internal pressure. I'm specifically taking a look at positive internal pressure for this wind load case. Once I've entered all of my parameters, I can click on the new option and then I can name this wind definition. So I'm going to go ahead and say roof Z zero to H. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. 
Let's go ahead and create the next one. So all I'm going to modify is this distance from the windward edge. I'm going to enter this at 44. Click the new button. I'll call this roof Z H22H. And again, familiarity with what the code is requiring will make sure that you create as many wind definitions as you're going to need considering your roof geometry. And then finally, I'm going to enter the last one. I'm going to go ahead and go the full length of the structure, 168 feet. Click on the new option. And then here again, we'll say roof Z. And we'll just call it 2H. Click OK. Now at this point, I've completed this particular wind load case for the roof uh, in the positive Z direction. So I can go ahead and click close here. Now at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and assign the wind load to the roof areas. Now here you're going to have to specifically tell the program which roof areas are receiving which particular, particular load. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So what I'm going to do is let's start by selecting the load case we're working on. I'm selecting load in the Z direction with positive internal pressure, and I'm specifically taking a look at case A. Next, I'm going to go ahead and go to the proper area in the data panel. I'm going to select the Areas tab, followed by the Surface Load icon. Let's go ahead and unselect everything. Hold down your Shift key, and then I'm going to select the wind areas that would basically represent from 0 to H as far as like distance from the windward wall if wind were acting on the structure in the positive Z direction. I've selected those areas. I'm going to go to the Spreadsheet tab and then tell the program I want to assign my wind pressure. Here I'm going to go ahead and select the appropriate wind definition. I'm going to go roof Z 0 to H. As a reminder, I can see all of the parameters that were input into this wind definition, and I can review the report. Now within this report, I'll be able to see a variety of pieces of information, and two key pieces of information would be the C to P value that the program is able to successfully look up in the ASCE 7, and then finally, the design wind pressure calculations. If I'm satisfied with everything, let's go ahead and click OK. And you can see here in the data panel that the wind pressure has been successfully assigned to these load areas. Next, I'm going to again hold down my Shift key and select the next two areas. Here, I'm going to assign my wind pressure again. This time, I'm going to select the H to 2H option. Go ahead and click OK. Here I can see that pressure was assigned. Finally, let's go ahead and again hold down our Shift key and we'll select the rest of the roof areas which would need that last wind definition. Now, of course, you're also going to need to know exactly how long each of these panels are. It might not necessarily be just one panel for each of those areas. It depends upon your distance from your windward wall. So here I'm going to go ahead and select roof Z to H, click OK, and then I can see my pressures were assigned. Now, if I would like to see any of the wind definitions that were assigned, I can go to the data panel and the areas tab, and then the wind load definition icon, and I can see each wind definition that was assigned. This is an extra area so I can go ahead and double check my work. Now, as a reminder, only one wind definition can be assigned to each area within each particular load case. Okay. Now, wind areas or load areas are basically a mechanism within RAM elements for you to transfer pressure loads to supporting framing members. They don't provide any extra stiffness or any extra weight to the structure. They're just specifically used to transfer surface loads. Now, if you'd like to see the resulting member loads that were determined through those calculations. You can go ahead and highlight your structure and go to the Areas tab 
and then you can go ahead and ask the program to distribute the load to the supporting members. Now this is an extra way for you to kind of take a look and see which direction your load arrows are acting in to make sure everything looks appropriate. Now you don't necessarily have to select this icon before performing an analysis. When an analysis is performed, the program will automatically distribute those area loads. Now if you'd like to see the load values, we can go here and select loads and then you can go ahead and select load values if you'd like a little additional information. Now at this point, this concludes our process for assigning wind loads to a gable roof structure when wind is acting parallel to the ridge. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.